Hey everybody, what's up? I know it's been forever since I last did Marvel Mondays, and I apologize for that. Um, the reason being is because, you know, my sleep schedule was really bad for a very long time. And um, what would usually end up happening is I would want to do Marvel Mondays on stream, but uh, I would just end up not having the energy to do so, or it would end up being so late uh, to stream that I decided it'd be better to just wait until tomorrow, and then I ended up not streaming uh, the next day anyway. So in order to make up for all the weeks that I, I lost uh, of not doing Marvel Mondays, I'm going to cover all the topics that I wanted to talk about um, during those weeks that I missed and uh, hopefully get caught up. Uh, I'm not going to go over everything that uh, I wanted to discuss um, this week, but, uh, you know, especially since, you know, with the second episode of Loki debuting today, um, I think it would be better for me to just talk about a couple of the things that I wanted to discuss, uh, and then next week I'll cover the rest of the topics and we can talk about the first two episodes of Loki. So, uh, yeah, to start off, let's uh, talk about uh, the last two episodes of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, because, man... I wanted to talk about that so much, and I just never got around to it. Anyway, so um, in case uh, you already forgot what, what happened, since it has been a while since, uh, you know, the show finished, um, basically, episode four um, was, you know, oh, excuse me, I'm recording this in the morning, uh, and I got my coffee, so uh, forgive me if you see me. Uh, take a sip uh, every once in a while. Um, in episode four, you know, uh, Bucky and, and Falcon were trying to track down Carly, figure out where he was, and, and of course, um, John Walker and, and Battlestar, um, you know, you know, they, they basically followed them to where they were going, and, uh, excuse me, they ended up uh, <laughs> meeting Carly, um, at this place, and, uh, you know, Sam was trying to talk her down, you know, get her to surrender peacefully, but of course John had to come in and interrupt their meeting, you know, which made, made it seem to Carly that, that, you know, she was being deceived by Sam, and, um, you know, by the end of the episode, they ended up fighting, and, and, you know, Lamar ended, you know, Lamar, aka Battlestar, ended up dying during the fight, and uh, as a result of this, you know, because uh, John had uh, taken the, the super soldier serum, which, you know, Carly uh, spill, spilled a bunch of vials everywhere during a chase sequence. And, and John ended up saving the last one that didn't get broken for himself. And uh, it's most likely because of that, as a side effect, that he ended up, uh, you know, losing his mind in anger and ended up chasing down one of the Flag Smashers and killing them in public. Now, at the start of episode five, um, you know, he's basically running away from the scene of the crime and, and, you know, ended up in this, I guess, abandoned train station or, or, or something. And uh, Sam and Bucky, uh, you know, chased him to this place and they ended up fighting. And it was a, quite a brutal battle. Like, like, Bucky got his robotic arm torn off of... Well, actually, I don't think it was torn off. It, I think he just, it was just, like, broken temporarily or something like that. It's it's another fight that I'm thinking of where that happened. And uh, Sam ended up getting his, his, his wings torn off, which, you know, after the fight was over, you know, the only way that they were able to, to subdue Walker was by, uh, you know, breaking his arm. And, uh, you know, so... After everything, you know, was said and done, and, and you know, Sam uh, surrendered his wings. Um, not not surrendered. I'm, I don't know why I said that, but but yeah. But basically, you know, he gave his wings to Torres um, and and told him, you know, everything that happened, and you know, basically gave him the rundown on on what's going to be happening with Walker. Um, so uh, I'm going to go off a. Uh, a bit on a bit of comic book history uh, for, for a second here to actually explain who Joaquin Torres is uh, in the comics. Uh, excuse me. In order to set up the context for um, where his character is possibly going to go in the MCU. So in the comics, Joaquin Torres actually becomes the new Falcon after Sam Wilson becomes Captain America. 
um, <clears throat> you know, Torres was a guy who was, you know, helping people trying to come to America by leaving them food and medicine at the border. And then one day he gets captured by the Sons of the Serpent and gets experimented on uh, by a villain named Karl Malice. Uh, Carl was creating <clears throat> human-animal hybrids, and uh, when he experimented on Torres, what he did was uh, he fused uh, Torres with Sam's pet partner, Red Wing, who is in the comics a real bird, not a robot like in the MCU. So, um, because um, Red Wing is vampiric, um, you know, basically having elements and features of a vampire um that includes him having a healing factor which means that unlike uh, other subjects of, of this of these experiments that carl malice was doing um <clears throat> torres did not um revert back to normal after a certain amount of time uh, because of the newly gained healing factor that he got from red Wing. so eventually you know sam wilson captain america was informed of Joaquin's appearance. He ended up investigating the case and, you know, fought against Malice, saved Torres. And, you know, <clears throat> when once this happened, you know, since, since you know, like I said, his, his transformation into a, a human-animal hybrid uh, was, was permanent. Um, and, and, you know, of course, that the animal that he was fused with was a bird. He, he basically decided to, um, you know, become the, the, the new Falcon, you know, as, a, as the sidekick for Captain America, since the original Falcon it, it was now Captain America himself. So, uh, you know, so basically that, that's just me explaining, you know, what his history is in, in the comics for where he's going to go in the MCU. So basically when, uh, <laughs> when Torres asks uh, Sam, you know, what do you want me to do with the wings? And Sam says, keep them. That's foreshadowing for when Torres becomes the Falcon in the MCU. <laughs> Although, obviously, you know, he's not going to be a human-animal hybrid in the MCU. Um, he's going to, obviously, going to be just, you know, the, the Falcon in the same way that, that Sam was the Falcon. But anyway, <clears throat> so, you know, we see the scene where, you know, Walker is uh, not necessarily on trial for, for what he did, but, but more or less... Uh, being dishonorably, dishonorably discharged from his role as Captain America. And then, you know, he's told to, you know, return the shield and whatnot. Um, excuse me. Um, so next up, we, we, we were introduced to Contessa Valentina Allegra de la Fontaine, who from this point on, I'm going to just be calling Valerie. Um, she comes along and, and gives uh, Walker an offer um, you know, to work for her, I, I guess, and, um, y you know, like, like, she, she's only around very momentarily, but I, I like her presence. She, she, there's a very mysterious air to her, and, and also a, a very, you know, commanding, authoritative, uh, air to her, you know, like, <laughs> she's only been in two scenes so far, but, but, I love her character already, and, and the actress they got to play her is, um, wow, like, like, they, they really perfected who, who they, who, who they got to, to play her, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I like her character very much already, but, but anyway, you know, she, she gives John an, an offer and, and says, you know, to, to pick up the phone once, um, she calls him and whatnot, and, um, Again, I'm going to go a bit into uh, her character in the comics in order to, uh, you know, uh, discuss where her character might go in the MCU. So, um, uh, basically, Valerie is an uh, obscure character from the comics. You know, she was introduced very long time ago, like, I think in the 70s or something like that. And she hasn't really been seen all that much in the comics, you know. She's, she was, she's also known as Lady Hydra, although, you know, at that time she was acting as a double agent against Hydra rather than for them. Um, she once acted as Nick Fury's love interest, um, the original Nick Fury, not the ultimate universe Nick Fury. Um, 
she was the leader of Fem Force, which I think was Marvel's first all female team. There, she was there to explain the ramifications uh, of the British version of the Superhuman Registration Act during um, the first Civil War uh, story. And, you know, there was one story where we got more backstory on her and stuff like that. But other than that, she's really not a character that has been seen all that much. Like, she's only been around very few times and has only played a small role in most of the stories where she has appeared. So, yeah, much like with um, Agatha from WandaVision, um, <clears throat> this is them utilizing a character who's rarely seen in the MCU um, or rather, who's, who's, who's rarely seen in the comics and introducing them into the MCU. Um, and uh, it's precisely because we haven't seen them much in the comics and they're, and they're so rarely used that it's actually very hard to guess where exactly their character is going to go um, in the MCU going forward. Like, they, they, there's just so many things that they could do with their character. Like... There's basically a lot of creative freedom for, for how their character can be used because seeing as how they haven't been used much in the comics, they, they can basically do whatever they want. Like, there's really not much character for them to stay true to uh, when when using them in the MCU. So, yeah, I, I'm very much um, looking forward to see where her character is going to go. Like I said, I, I love the actress that they chose to... Um, to, to play her, I, I love her character already. She, she basically dominates every scene that she's in, even though she's only showed up twice so far. And um, I'm willing to bet that it's possible that we'll actually see her character in Black Widow, because let's not forget, Black Widow was supposed to come out um, before Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So it's entirely possible that Black Widow was supposed to be her introduction, and when we see her in um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's supposed to be an oh shit moment, you know, so I don't know. We'll see when Black Widow comes out whether or not if uh, that movie was meant to be her introduction and whether or not her um, appearance in um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier recontextual is recontextualized. Um, by her appearance in Black Widow, uh, should she appear in that movie. <laughs> so anyway, um, <clears throat> after Valentina, or, or Valerie, uh, meets with, um, you know, Walker, Bucky finds Zemo, you know, I guess at the memorial of, of you know, his family who, who died during the Sokovia battle in the uh, Age of Ultron, and, um, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. God. You know, Bucky finds Zemo. The, the Wakandans, you know, take him to the raft, which is that, that prison that, you know, the heroes who, who who lost during Civil War were taken to, you know. But, of course, they were rescued, you know, by the end of the movie. You know, they, they basically took him there. And uh, so, yeah, obviously, since Zemo didn't die, this clearly means that this isn't the last time that we're going to see him. I'm sure he'll be back eventually. And, well, I'll get to that as well. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, um, after that scene, we uh, we see Sam uh, attempt to give the shield to um, Isaiah Bradley, who uh, tells Sam, you know, his history and, and what he went through, you know, being recruited to, to, to be Captain America and how he was quote unquote rewarded for, for doing so, you know, basically that, you know, he was imprisoned for, for, for 30 years, even though, you know, he, he basically, you know, re rescued his, his brothers who he was told not, not, not to go save for, for whatever reason, like his history in the MCU is pretty much the same as, as it is in the comics. Um, you know what like they basically in the comics uh they, they they rounded up like like a hundred uh black americans and experimented on them you know with with different super serious symptoms and whatnot to see what effect they would have on them only a small few of them ended up surviving and isaiah bradley is uh the only one who ended up um 
surviving and, and thus serving as Captain America as a result of these experiments. And that seems to be more or less uh, the same thing as, you know, what happened in the MCU. So, so yeah. Um, and, and by the way, um, his history in, in the comics is also more or less the, the same thing as experiments that happened on uh, black people in, in America um, in real life. So, yeah, I, that, that's something that, that uh, is definitely worth uh, learning the history about, not just, uh, you know, for comic books, but, but also in real life as well. But anyway, um, so yeah, uh, basically all of episode five is, is basically just, you know, character development and, and building up to the final episode. You know, we, we see, you know, Sam round up some friends to, to help get the boat repaired so they can sell it because, you know, they're, they're still, you know, financially hurting and, and thus, you know, they, they have no other way to make money, basically, besides, you know, selling the boat that they, well, Sam initially didn't want to sell. And, uh, you know, they get it all fixed up. But, but then, you know, Sam's sister comes to the realization that, you know, they, they wouldn't be able to sell it even after fixing it up because it's so old and, and whatnot that, that nobody would want it. But, uh, you know, we see him and Bucky talk about, um, you know, what Steve wanted for, you know, who Captain America is and whatnot. And, and you know, Sam trying to become the next Captain America with the shield, you know, and stuff. But also Bucky um, uh, called in a favor from the Wakandans since uh, he helped them capture Zemo. And, um, excuse me, as we would see in the next episode, um, you know, what it is, is, um, you know, Sam's new suit. Um, I, I thought, you know, it was just going to be his new pair of wings since his original ones got, got broken. But no, they, they, they actually gave him a, a full on entire suit. So. Yeah, but but what was one of the most exciting things for me in episode five was seeing Batroc come back because I knew, you know, since he escaped from the first episode, um, I knew that you, you would see him coming back like like they wouldn't introduce him ju just for him to not show up again. Like they're not going to wait an entire move for another movie or another show for him to come back, you know, like they brought him in in the very first episode for a reason. So, so yeah, um, and, uh, and uh, speaking of which, um, when, when I saw that, that uh, you know, Sharon was, was on the phone with somebody and, and they were speaking French, I, I realized, oh shit, that, that's Backtrack that she's talking to. And one of the theories that, that was going around was that Sharon herself was the power broker. And I'm thinking, you know, when I saw that scene, oh shit, are these theories that Sharon's the power broker actually true and then of course um we find out in the next episode that that yes they are um but uh we'll get to that reveal um later on so you know Batshaw comes back the flag smashers uh execute their plan to stop the vote you know on, on you know deporting all of these um refugees uh, back to their home country uh because you know half the population came back um which, you know, previously they were allowed to stay because of the population shortage. But now that everybody's back, you know, they, they, they don't got, supposedly they don't got the room for it anymore. So, uh, you know, Flag Smashers are, are, are against, you know, sending these people away and whatnot. So, you know, they're going to, their plan was to stop the vote, you know, uh, on this and, um... <laughs> So, uh, basically, uh, with, with Sam's new suits, which looks amazing, by the way, like, this is one of the, the best transitions from, you know, comic to, to movie that I've ever seen, uh, it, you know, on a, on a superhero costume. Like, it, Sam's suit looks incredible. It's amazing. Like, like I, I don't even know what else to say. It, it's just, it looks amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, um... You know, like, like, there's really not much plot of, of anything that, that happens in, in, in the last episode. It's basically just all one big action sequence. You know what I mean? Like, like, Batroc, you know, he, he's there to help the Flag Smashers because he was hired by the Power Broker or whatever. You know, he, he, you know, he and Sam fight for a bit. You know, Sam and Bucky, you know, 
they, they evacuate the building and whatnot, you know, as the Flag Smashers try to carry out their plan, you know, Sharon's there to help them, which, you know, we would find out later that, that she's actually the power broker. Um, Walker comes back and, uh, he has a new shield that, that he made himself. Um, episode five has a, uh, I think, I think it was a post credit scene or mid credit scene, one of the two, where, um, he, uh, we, we see him building his own shield, um, you know, since he lost the, the, the original Captain America shield. And uh, I thought that this scene took place after Valerie had contacted him and, you know, he was making his own vibranium shield because she acquired the materials or whatever. But no, it's just a regular metal shield that, that he made entirely on his own, you know, with, of his own design and whatnot, which is why you, you see it, you know, get damaged, you know, during the fight, obviously. So, you know, it's not made out of vibranium. It's not indestructible. So, yeah, you know, so, you know, we see them fight in the streets, um, <laughs> and, and a bit of, admittedly, th th this is kind of bullshit, but, you know, at the very last minute, you know, Walker redeems himself by choosing to, to save people who were in a, in a, in a truck that, that, that was going to fall r rather than going after Carly, you know, during their fight and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, he, he redeems himself by, by by doing that, as well as, you know, helping Sam and Bucky fight against the, the Flag Smashers. Um, they ended up getting chased into this uh, empty building that, that, that's still under construction. Um, it's revealed that the power broker, you know, Sharon's the power broker and whatnot. You know, Batroc is there as well. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he decides to blackmail her by, by saying that, uh, it, you'll, you'll pay me more than, than what you've already paid me in order for me to keep your identity a secret. And they're in, you know, like this Mexican standoff situation where they're all shooting guns at each other. And uh, uh, Sharon decides to, to shoot Batshock first, but we don't see what happens to him. And uh, then we, we actually end up seeing that, that Sharon gets shot, but, um, you know, she, she's just, you know, temporarily incapacitated because she's wearing a bulletproof vest and whatnot. And, um, you know, Carly, unfortunately, dies uh, w during the confrontation with, with uh, uh, bet during uh, her and Sam uh, because uh, Sharon en ends up shooting her to stop him from, or to stop Carly from, from killing Sam. Uh, so, you know, Sam has to, you know, unfortunately, uh, bring Carly's body out to, to, to reveal that, that she ultimately died, um, you know, during the fight. And um, that speech that, that Sam gives, you know, to talk about, you know, how, you know, he knows that, that people aren't going to like him being the new Captain America, you know, because he's black, and how, you know, the people, you know, he, he's basically telling the, the politicians that he rescued to question why it is that, that Carly died uh, fighting against what they were trying to do. You know, like, it's the kind of speech that you, you wish that, that politicians in real life were uh, given because this is the kind of stuff that those people need to hear. You know what I mean? And uh, ultimately, you know... <clears throat> When the first episode aired and, and I heard that, you know, the villains of the show were, were going to be a, a group that wants open borders and whatnot, I was worried about how this show was going to ha ha handle the politics of it be because of, you know, like, you're essentially turning good guys in, 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 into the villains of the show. So I was worried that, um you know, they were going to betray... Uh, pot portray, um, you know, people who ultimately want good things as actually, you no, know, the, these good things that they want are actually bad, but it actually ended up ha handling the, the, the politics uh, of what the Flag Smashers wanted better than expected, and especially, you know, with that speech that, that Sam gives at the end, you know, like I said, it, it's the kind of thing that, that politicians in real life need to hear, so... Ultimately, uh, um, 
even if the, the, there were some parts that that could have been handled better, I'm ultimately happy with how um, the show's politics were were handled. So yeah, at the end of the show, um, uh, one of the last things that happens is um, Bucky goes to um, the old man who was uh, who was living in I guess the same apartment building as he is, and uh, you know, in the first episode, you know, when they go out to eat. Um, he talks about how his son w w was killed and he doesn't know who did it or, or how he died and whatnot. So, um, you know, one of the last things that happens in the episode is Bucky tells him that he was killed by the Winter Soldier, who was him at the time. And, you know, that he basically didn't have a choice because at the time he was being mind controlled. So it was, you know, out of his control of what happened. And um, it kind of feels like that there could have been a bit more payoff to this, like, like, I, I don't know exactly what they could have done to, to make this, uh, resolution better, but it does ultimately feel underwhelming, even if Bucky and, and the old guy, of course, uh, end up getting some closure on, on what happened, you know, but, uh, yeah, that, that's basically the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, I enjoyed it very much, and, you know, like I said, the, the, the politics uh, surrounding uh, what the show was about um, were handled much better than expected. Um, there's a lot of great uh, character development and, and things like that, uh, you know, especially in the fifth episode. And, uh, you know, ultimately this was, you know, building up to uh, Sam becoming the next Captain America. And, you know, they, they have already announced, you know, on the same day that the final episode debuted, they already announced that um, a, a fourth Captain America movie um, was going to be happening. So, of course, Sam Wilson is going to be uh, the new Cap once that movie comes out. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to that. And I'm also interested in seeing uh, where Bucky's character goes from here on out as well. And, um, oh, yeah, um, the post credit scene. Um, I think it's the post credit scene, mid credit scene, whatever. <laughs> So Sharon actually ends up getting pardoned for uh, what she did during Civil War, which is why she went to Magipur in the first place. Uh, but um, as we know now, she's also the power broker, which means that um, not only was she pardoned, she was also given a, a position in, in government. So now she has government secrets to sell and, and technology and whatnot, whatever else that, that she can sell to whoever, you know, she serves, you know. I mean, it's, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's, she either is the power broker or she is a figurehead for, for the power broker. Like, like the power broker is actually someone else, but, but she more or less acts in the power broker's place. Like, like, she tells people that she's the power broker, even though she's not, you know, a, as a cover for the real power broker. Or, or you know, it, it's... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's a weird theory, but but it's it's I, I'm probably just you know because there's really nothing for for me to to base this off of, but so it's entirely possible that she really is just the power broker herself and not acting as a cover for somebody. Although that does leave up in, in the air the question as to who it is that she's talking to, or you know, in in the mid credit scene or post credit scene, whatever. But uh, yeah, basically. Um, Oh, oh, yeah, and, and John Walker becomes U.S. agent proper. I, I forgot to mention that. Um, you know, he he uh, meets with, with Valerie again. Um, he, he's given, you know, the, the black suit, the, the famous U.S. agent black suit that, that he, he's most commonly known for wearing in the comics, and he becomes U.S. agent uh, proper. Uh, previously, I had been calling him U.S. agent in, in other Falcon and Winter Soldier discussions, but he hadn't actually become U.S. agent yet. Uh, like in the comics, he was actually uh, a replacement for Captain America before he became known as U.S. Agent. So yeah, now John Walker is actually U.S. Agent now. And um, yeah, w with, um, you know, Zemo, you know, in jail but still alive, and now U.S. Agent um, being introduced to the MCU proper, you know, all of these events that have happened in, in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier are basically setting up for the Thunderbolts to... Uh, be introduced into the MCU. So uh, we'll see um, what 
other pieces uh, to the Thunderbolts being introduced into the MCU come along. Like, like I said, you know, there could very well be some stuff that we see in Black Widow that, that also uh, contribute to the buildup of the Thunderbolts in the MCU. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that's basically uh, all that I have. I wanted to, to talk about um, uh, for uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier. There, there may have been some, you know, stuff that I missed or stuff that I forgot to cover or whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, if there's anything that you want to hear my thoughts about um, with, with regards to the show, you know, whether it be the last episodes or the entire show or whatnot, just leave your thoughts in the comments below and. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to uh, either respond to your comments or, or, or talk about it next week when Marvel Mondays uh, actually comes back. 